Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and for today's vlog I sat down with one of the people who's responsible for the big 90s rave anthem Dominator that came out under the project name Human Resource. I'm talking about Hido Panet. I made a visit to his studio in The Hague and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with him and you will hear the story behind Dominator. Enjoy! Hido Pernet is a Dutch DJ producer who's active in the scene for many years already. He is part of Human Resource, who had a massive hit in 1991 with their track Dominator, which became one of the biggest rave anthems of all time. During his career, Hido produced lots of tracks in all kinds of genres and styles. For example, he did work with Mark van Dalen and Erik de Koning on several projects such as Club Royale and Dub Foundation. Plus another track that became very successful was Higher and Higher by DJ Jurgen, which was co-written by Hido. And something that Dutch people that grew up in the 90s might still remember is the track Mossels by the Mosselman, which Hido was part of as well. But his biggest success is Dominator, a track that's almost 30 years old now and got remixed plenty of times during the years. I recently sat down with Hido in his studio in The Hague to talk with him about the story behind Dominator by Human Resource. My first question to him was how everyone from Human Resource met each other. Uh, it was at the end of uh, 1990 and uh, I was already interested in house music and um, me and my friend Jasper um, the, the, we, we were set to go to a, a party in, uh, in Ahoy Rotterdam and there I met uh, Robert and, and Johan and they were, I knew that they were already busy making their music and stuff and we were just entering you know, experimenting with, uh, with a, a Commodore Amiga and, and, and Cubase and stuff and so that's where we met and that's where everything was started I mean we, 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 we met each other there and, and I knew them from from way back and it was like okay um, let's do something together let's let's make music Ta-da! <laughs> on a small very small uh, room in the attic of someone's house and then and, and it was really small and it was really warm so what kind of music did you listen to when you started with producing music? Well, uh, I was a metalhead. So I, I, uh, I used to be in a, in a, in a metal band. And, but the other guys, I knew they were more the synthy guys. Uh, and and I, I listened to that stuff when I was younger. The Italian disco and... and uh, but mainly I was in a, a Metallica Slayer. And, and yeah, that was... And I, I used to have that long hair, so I think that gives away. Yeah. In 1991, Dominator came out, which was the debut track of Human Resource. What do you remember from the production process of Dominator? Um, well, everything was, um, you know, the, the, we, the, we had the sound. That was really the, the, the iconic sound, the, the Hoover sound. Uh, Robert, he made it, the, was one of the guys. And um, uh, on that machine that you know, it's a, it, it, it was stolen from us back in, in the 90s and then by sheer luck i found it back and 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 okay so it's it's back here but he was the synth programming guy and he used to fiddle around and and so but at that time um we thought it wasn't uh it was too too loud too heavy too aggressive to use but um one night um uh, we we went to a club called night town in uh, in in rotterdam and um, we, um, I, I used to be, uh, play in, in a metal band, and um, so we we went to the, the 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 barn where we we used to practice, and we hooked that machine up to a Marshall amp, and then it was clear that we sh we used we should use that sound, and um, uh, Mentasm from Joey Beltram was already out, and so we were okay. Well, then it probably is a is aggressive but we can use it and uh, the the raps from Lorenzo were already recorded and so um, it was very simple it was I'm the one and only dominator I want to kiss myself I'm bigger and bolder rougher and tougher you know what sucker there is no other so I I I I I boom and that's in a, in a nutshell how it went is it true the track was done in just three hours time yeah if, 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 if everything was already produced because uh, it's the sound that was already made and I, and I can remember that they were f uh, Robert was fiddling around with the sound and it would, there's only one riff you can play with the sound as it is 
uh, 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 uh. It's, it's, uh, you can't do anything else with it because of the, the pitch modulation that's in the sound. And, and okay, well, so, uh, uh, and the high sound is the, the, the higher, uh, the higher keys. Uh, the the um, I, I don't know what what, what you call it, but it's it, it's the 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 feet feel sound I don't know anywhere that that's the high end and um, so the, the only thing you can do melody wise with that sound is what we did at that moment and then uh, with the, to top it off with the sa the samples and boom yeah was there anything that inspired you while working on the track or maybe any other tracks my mentism. Because it's uh, well, not, not really uh, like inspired, but because the, you, you couldn't do anything with it. But uh, it's like I said, it's at it, 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 it first we thought it was too aggressive, and um, the, the 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 giveaway was the the Mentasm track, uh, and um, the um, uh, yeah that we, we 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 played it really loud on a on a Marshall amp. That was uh, okay. We should use it. Yeah, definite. So besides the Juno, what other equipment was used for Dominator? Um, we had a, a mixing desk, an M M24E, the Roland. It's like this big. Um, later on, we used that uh, uh, same desk to create our, our big kick drums uh, because we, we used it as, a, as an overdrive uh, table. Uh, there was a, a lazy squatter verb. Uh, used uh, as a, as a uh, an effect machine, uh, we had a, a, G a Yamaha TG77. This is the, the the strange bass sound at the end. There was a um, I think there was a D110 or so the the Roland synth for the bass line. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, and and of course the the Juno, the Alpha Juno. Dominator contains reps from Lorenzo Nash, who's a former professional basketball player. Yeah. Was it already the intention from the start to make Dominator a vocal track? Um, no, it was um, Lorenzo did the, the, the vocals just before going uh, on leave back to the US. And he was a, the, a professional basketball player for the uh, team called Verkerk in, 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 in Zwijndrecht. And it's... Um, uh, um, because he, uh, they, 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 they had this basketball team and they, they, they got it over and that's a bit of the history then, um, Johan and Robert, they were already, all both working as CAD CAM art designers, you know, on, a, on a AutoCAD, it's, it's a yeah, CAD, CAD program for, for the, the, the designing buildings and, and electrical systems and stuff. And Lorenzo was playing for the team of Verkerk. And so, I don't know how, how it went, but anyway, they met him there because he was working, uh, they were working there and he was in the, in the basketball team and they said, okay, well, you can come over. And he was sitting there uh, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a corner with a, a microphone and a, and a beer. And um, these were the raps he normally used to do when he was walking around for Kerk. So, and then that's when they recorded it, but he already did another track called uh, it's techno time uh, on midtime records because uh, there was also another guy that was the the the, the, the he had connections with midtown and so he knew like renzo and no well that's that's in a nutshell or in a no the, the long version did you have any clue that dominator was going to be this big after it was finished <laughs> no, I was I was thinking about it this morning. Uh, I can remember Robert saying, "I think we have like a summer hit," and I think, "Yeah, right." Wishful thinking, of course. <laughs> well, boy, was he right. Was it difficult to get the track signed? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. There was there was, there was a, a, a small. Um, there was this. Uh, we 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 first. Um, um, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to name names, but uh, we, we we gave the track to someone, and he said, "Okay, it's really cool, and uh, uh, but you have to to change that bit." And um, we changed a bit, and then we got back, and they said, "No, why did you change it? It's it's the best part of the whole track." And we're like, uh, "Okay, bye bye." And so there was uh, AD Own Records, and um, and they said, "Okay, we're going to do it," and and. Um, 
yeah, it went, went like a rocket from there because and and I can remember that because the 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 the, the, the manager of of uh, I'm Zebra uh, the the distribution he wasn't convinced and he was like no this is too loud and so Jayant from uh, Adiom he he said come on you've got to come uh, to uh, to Parkzicht and I will show you what what's what's going to happen so he put in the dot on the machine and. The the, the 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 crowd exploded and he was like okay now I get it so and that's that's yeah how Dominator got signed and he was like convinced do you have any idea how many copies have been sold of Dominator well we would be, we, we, we've been told about 750,000 Dominator is almost 30 years old now it got remixed a lot of times from the classic remixes by Joey Beltram, Frank the Wolf, CJ Bolland, Richie Houghton, etc. Then some new remixes were done by people such as Vincent Amore, DJ Misha, DJ Isaac, The Clubheads, Atlantic Ocean and others. For the 25th anniversary Armin van Buren did a new version. Yeah. Maybe this is a bit of a difficult question, but what is your favorite remix of Dominator? Well, I think that that uh, um, the, the the was from one of the first ones that we heard was the Frank the Wolf mix, the slow, the with the the, the, the very low, okay, you know the, the I don't know what he did, but uh, the, he he put it in a sampler, I guess, and then it was yeah, I think that's that's still the one that's because it was in the beginning everything was new, so um, yeah, I think I have to choose for that one, and I really like the the Armin version as well. I don't know. It's like I, I never uh, thought he was. He would have been able to to surprise me again. I don't know. It's like and the other versions. They 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 were from the bass modulators and whatever. They're really cool. You know. It's that I like I like them. But it's you know. It's I don't know. It's the 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 Armin version. It it captures for some reason. It captures the 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 essence of the track. So yeah. If you could pick any remixer now for a new remix, who would it be and why? Rick Rubin. <laughs> Metal version. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I don't know. It's like like uh, you, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, Skrillex? I don't know. It's like it, it, it's it's been so many times that uh, that's been uh, uh, it's, it has been remixed, but um, yeah, it's something really strange. Or uh, Johannes Sebastian Bach make a classical version of it. I don't know. It's like I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I, have to, I have to go with uh, Rick Rubin. Yeah, yeah. Together with the Public Enemy, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Slayer and Public Enemy. Ta da. Yeah, with some raps from Chuck D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Additional raps, you know. It's like uh, yeah, yeah. I would like that. Dominator made it into the UK single chart two times. Yeah. And it was also a top ten hit in the Dutch charts. Was this also the moment you guys decided to go touring with Human Resource as a live act? Uh, it was long before that because uh, that, that was it was June, uh, um, if I'm correctly, it's June the 25th in uh, if, uh, 1991. Our, uh, we um, it was a, it's a friend of mine from when I was like this big, he he became the manager, the the the, the promoter for uh, Tomorrowland, uh, the the you know the big fish dome in near the. Uh, near Rotterdam, uh, the club. Yeah, the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, "Oh, yeah, you guys from okay. Well, you should go to do a show with me." And um, okay, so that's basically how it started. Uh, we we was uh, yeah. No, I I, I used to do, do do the shows with a metal band, and um, but it's this is really something different. And uh, so we found our way, and then it became more in, in, in later years like some sort of metal act in um, in Scotland and uh, in, in, in the UK and yeah that was cool was so the, the, the um, electronically doing what I used to be doing but then with a band and then with no drummer that was too drunk to uh, to to you know that's that stuff because the band is always trouble and and, and I really loved it I, I really miss it but it's yeah it's sometimes it's headache do you still perform or DJ under the name Human Resource? Yeah, yeah. I used to play in uh, in Amsterdam uh, two weeks ago. Um, it was for uh, like a uh, beneficiary for the the cancer uh, foundation or whatever. It's like uh, and then uh, in uh, in a couple of weeks I go to Scotland again. Um, yeah, we we've seen the whole world. And um, yeah, the, 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 those are the, there are a couple of times that the stand out and. Um, 
Uh, yeah, but it's, it's still, you know, the, the, when the, 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 the blood keyboard, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, it's, it's still a really cool to go on tour somewhere. What's the best memory you have from the release of Dominator? Well, I think that's that's the the, the, the gigs we did in, uh, in in the US. It's like we 1992 we go to we went to uh, to Los Angeles, and then in 1994 we did a. Uh, I think that that's the the, the most memorable. Uh, we did a, um, a double or two shows one day, one in Toronto on an island with all the. You know, with, with with limousines and 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 and, and what well, everything there was, there was like uh, you, two Unlimited was there and uh, Robin S, um, West Bam, Joey Beltram, the the whole everything who was something it was there, and then we went to uh, to play in the Limelight in New York in the evening, so we have to uh, we uh, we were thrown on a boat because it was on the island, then to the side in a, a big limousine all the stuff go to the hotel, boom, to the airport, and then to LaGuardia, and then from all luxury, and, and we were there, five guys, um, waiting to find a taxi to the limelight, to in the downtown New York, and we, someone picked us up, and then we went through all the, 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 the you know, the, the bad parts where cars were like, you know, on, 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 on blocks and besides the road, like totally stripped down and we're like, okay, if something happens to the car, we're dead. So um, that was the really big contrast. But the day after, the, 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 the lime that was really awesome. It was like mental. And later on, I saw the, the, the movie. I was like, okay, the, our, our uh, dressing room, there were all these freaky, strange people later on that there's, there's a uh, there's a movie came out party monster with uh, Macaulay Culkin and that told told about those guys who were there and the the, the guy that Macaulay Culkin plays a guy called Michael Alec he was like a farmer boy who came to the big city and he became one of the most flamboyant idiotic what what they did the, the wildest parties and in the end, he did so much drugs, he killed his dealer and put him in a box, had him like two weeks in his living room and then dumped him in the Hudson River. And I was like, okay, those were those guys. I can remember that. They, they, they were really off, you know? <laughs> of course, if you do so much drugs, that, that it's, no, it was, yeah. That was the, the, the limelight. And it's, it's amazing, it's, 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 uh, the, the limelight is, is truly strange. Okay, well, fits the, 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 the place and whatever. It, anyway, and it was really an awesome experience. Dominator got sampled a lot of times during the years. Um, in 2001, Scooter used a part of the raps in their track Posse, I Need You on the Floor. In 2009, the Bloody Beatroots and Steve Aoki used the Hoover sound in their track Warp. Also in 2009, Lady Gaga used a similar Hoover sound in Bad Romance. And in 2011, Rihanna used the same sound in her track Birthday Cake. Was there actually done something in a legal way for any of the times uh, someone used a sound or a sample? The sound isn't isn't copyrightable. Um, you can say it's it's an, it's an integral part of the melody, but it's how do you can it, everything in electronic music is so. But um, um, no, that you, you can patent the sound because okay, we have the synthesizer, and if someone else makes a sound with the same synth. You can pattern that, but okay, of course, Scooter uh, with the Posse, we were at BMG and BMG Ufa in Germany said, ah, you can do that. So uh, we, we got our fair share of that track. Thank you, HB Baxter. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but, but I really love those guys. I mean, the, 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 they, they were, they, they, they robbed themselves, you know, all the, all the, the, the famous tracks and I really liked what they did. Because it's like, it's a, the guy's an icon. Respect to the man in the ice cream van. Yes. What the fuck? It's really um, great. So what are you up to these days? Are you still active in the music business? Yeah, still still trying to do something, but um, it's uh, when you get older, it gets harder. Uh, 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 when you're younger, you, 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 do, you do something and it works and, and okay. But now it's like, try to find something new. It's, it's, uh, you know, and, and there's so many talents around and, and, and everyone with a, with a mobile phone and, and 
you know it's it's everybody can do it these days yeah. so uh by the time you discover something new it's already old again yeah. and 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 try to be uh as you know progressive to try to be as um um innovating as uh, you were you used to be or whatever you know it's like it's, that's not that's not easy it's it's really hard so is there anything we can expect music wise from you or human resource in the near future um well uh yeah it, uh, i really like to do uh, to do some new new album or whatever but i'm not, i'm not it, it, it's 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 like i say i don't know it's 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 uh, it's hard to find something new and and and, and with human resources uh, okay I, i'll i'll do keep on doing music I, I did a lot of projects on the on the aliases and that nobody knows about and that's cool i keep it that way it's you know it's because it's it's uh, it's um not only it's it's uh, my my business it's not it's it, i like to do it it's i do it for free and that and that's my my main goal of my main motto is as long as i like it enough to do it for free I keep on doing it. When I don't like it enough to do it for free, it's like the day I stop. So, yeah. Thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you very much. All right, that was it this week's vlog. My interview with Hido Pernet from Human Resource about their track Dominator. Hido, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like Leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you all for watching and until next time, bye bye.